Hi, my name is Katrina Novakovic and I work as a business architect at Red Hat. Part of what I do is I work with organisations to strategically consume, contribute and create open source projects. Over the past year, I've seen the increase in organisations wanting to adopt inner source. And for those that already have adopted inner source, they're really struggling with the cultural aspects of it. So today we're going to look at, does your culture need to change to improve inner source adoption? And specifically, we're going to look at three areas. So the first one is whether your organization's current cultural values and established beliefs are a good fit for the ways of working for inner source. Then we're going to look at a common question I get asked, which is how can you get more employees to collaborate on inner source projects when they're not part of their day to day responsibilities? And then we'll look at how you can use perceived negative cultural traits, such as competitiveness and control, to your advantage. So let's look at what are your organization's cultural traits and values. So when I ask this question, oftentimes people can name two or three of them and they struggle to name the remaining ones and they have to go and look it up. So actually, how easy it is for you to answer this question can reveal a lot about how ingrained those cultural values are within your organisation. So what I suggest you do is have a look at your company website, your intranet or a company report and really just study these core values that your organisation has and also look at the mission statement and the purpose statement that you have. And working with organisations, I tend to find that there's some common values that organisations have and they commonly are um, collaboration, something about serving customers, having something about being bold, being courageous and then innovation as well as a key one. So once you have an understanding of your cultural values, how well do they then fit with the values of open source? And the values of open source are collaboration, inclusiveness, meritocracy, open exchange, trust, transparency, all these things that you're used to hearing. And oftentimes, an organization's cultural values will actually be aligned quite well with the values of open source. I've actually yet to work with an organization that doesn't have at least one cultural value that's aligned. So this is a good thing, you know, you've got this alignment. So why is it that organisations are having cultural issues when trying to adopt in a source within their organisations if there is this alignment? And that comes to my third question. With these organisations' cultural values, do you actually see these characteristics in the day-to-day behaviour of the people when you experience them and interact with them? And this is where there is that misalignment. People aren't living the organisation's cultural values. So why is this? Well, typically, most organisations have this conventional top down approach. At the top, you have the CEO that's in control and it's very much a com com command and control driven organisation. You know, the, org the orders are given to you from above and then you just follow them. And the people within the organisation, they're concerned about promotion and pay. They want to get promoted to get that job title, to get that ranking, because that's how you get power within those organisations. Our previous CEO, Jim Whitehurst, wrote a book called The Open Organization, where he talks about a bottom up approach, which is different to this top down conventional style. And this is how Red Hat is set up. At the top, you still have that CEO that's in control, but he's more focused on setting the direction of the organization. He wants his people to understand that what the what they're trying to achieve. What is the purpose? What is the mission that people have? And then once people have that kind of shared purpose, the ones that can actually decide how they should execute on that mission and how they can achieve their goals is left to those below. They're the ones closest to the ground. So they're the ones that make the decision on how they can execute against that. And it's having this shared passion and purpose and that allows people to be really engaged and having control of their work and how they can do things. Um, people within the Closed kind of conventional top down organization are very much about kind of self interest, what you can get out of it, how you can kind of elevate yourself. Whereas an open organization is, is more about um, having a common purpose, working together to achieve this goal. Um, and that's kind of very two extreme views of, of one or the other. So when I ask people, do you see yourself more working in a kind of conventional closed top down organization or this kind of open bottom up approach? 
I, I get mixed reviews. So oftentimes people will say, oh, yes, I'm very much this conventional. There's very much com command and control driven. But actually, I'm seeing a lot of organizations saying, well, we're kind of set up in this conventional way, but there are pockets where people are working in these open ways. Um, so rather than asking, is your organization closed or is your organization open? We use this concept of degrees of openness. So we can say, well, my organization's about 40% open. We could be doing more, um, but it's not one or the other to the extreme. And actually, this is this is quite a good way to look at it. So if you want to kind of open up your organization, you, you don't have to flip and go the other way that you're operating. You can say, well, what can I just do to be 10% more open? But what can I do that little bit more to just um, kind of have these cultural traits of open source out there? So an open organization has five main um, characteristics. And to help remember them, there's this acronym ticker. Um, so the first letter is the first letter of, of, the, of the word. So for example, T is transparency. And then you've got inclusivity, collaboration, community, and adaptability. So I work with organizations and we look at how open or closed is your organization within these five areas. So if we take the first one, transparency, this is about kind of sharing information, but it's not just if you share, it's when you share. So do you share kind of later on when your project's nearly finished or do you share earlier on? Do you invite others to kind of join the process earlier on? Um, I don't have time to go into all of these, but I recommend that you have a look at opensource.com slash open organization. And there's a whole load of material out there for you. So really, the idea is that you want to see how you can open up your organization more to be able to adopt in a source within your organization better and see where you've got that misalignment of your kind of um, people's behavior of the culture within your organization and, and to align it better with the open source values. So how do we start to be more open? Well, I suggest that you take one of these five areas and um, they're all equally important. None's more than the other, but you might want to start with one where you're kind of seeing problems, where you're seeing people struggle. So identify that gap and then see if you can work on it. But rather than just work on it alone, collaborate with other people. So this might be within a team. You can all decide, for example, we want to work on being more transparent. We want to share more information within the team. Um, it'd be great if you can work with another team in a different area. How can you share information between your team and that other team? How can you improve things like that? And it's just taking action day by day. What can I do to be 10% better at sharing information? Are we, are, is what we're doing in our actions making us close off or is our actions opening us up? So it's basically just taking small steps every day to open up, to gradually open up your culture, to be more in line with the values that you hope for it to be. Now we're going to move on to one of the common questions I get asked, which is for an inner source project, how can I get more contributors that are outside of my immediate project team? And we're going to look at three areas. So the first one is how easy is it to actually consume and contribute to your project? Do people know what your project's about and how it can help them? And also have a look at accessibility. Can people find your project? And if they find it, can they actually contribute to it? Are there certain kind of restrictions where it's locked down in a certain code repository that only certain people within your project team can access? And then if you're outside that team, you have to request access to then get to it. So how open are you? Are you sharing access to the project? Is it accessible to many? And that leads to the second point where when people are actually accessing this project, they may be consuming it, but why aren't they actually contributing to it? Something I commonly see is that people are taking code, they're modifying it for their own project, but then they're not contributing it back. And the reason for this is that the modifications that they're making are quite complex or they're kind of um, very niche. What they're doing wouldn't actually apply to people generally within the organization. So contributing it back doesn't have any value. So you have to kind of look how widely used can your project be? Is it generic enough that people can actually adopt it and contribute it? Or, or is it too niche? Is it a suitable project for inner sourcing? Or would you be better off trying to in, in a source a different project that you can get more contributors to. And then the favorite reason for why people don't contribute as well is time. 
So I asked people, um, can employees contribute as part of their working hours to an inner source project? And the answer is generally yes, but it has to be relevant to the, their day job and what they're doing. So one way to get around this is sometimes organisations have a, a set annual number of hours for personal development and training. And these can actually be used to contribute on open source projects that are outside that team. And you can kind of use shadowing hours as well to help with this. And um, so have a think about within your organisation, is there any kind of um, time um, allocation that can be used towards contributing to inner source? And then moving on to the final part, which is looking at how perceived negative cultural traits of the behaviours within your organisation can be used to your advantage. So I've listed here some common things that I've seen uh, occur within organisations. So let's have a look at a few of them. So if we take competitiveness and ego, when you look at open source, um, contributing to open source is all about recognising those contributors. So can you use that to your advantage? How can you recognise and reward people for contributing to your um, projects? That can help with this. Another one is heavy focus on eff efficiency and profit. Maybe you can emphasise how reusing code can help people save time and also help projects save money. And then let's have a look at another one, um, say absence of meritocracy and fairness. How can you use your, you can, you can kind of use your inner source project to show people there is a different way of working. You can have meritocracy and fairness. You can work in a different way and be more open. So kind of use your project to show people that there is another way to work. So my recommendation to you is to have a look at this open organisation. Go to opensource.com slash open organisation. Just have a look more at these five kind of areas that you can have a look at and then just see how you can open up your organisation to improve the culture, to be more in line with the values of open source to help with inner source adoption. Thank you.